Okay guys, so this is a second overview video of the Speedy Publishing Online Reader. And today what we're going to be doing is taking a quick overview of the student login. Um, and we're going to be using, of course, the Mac and student login. And so um, just to kind of preface this, we wanted to again mention that in order to log in, we can log in using a username and a password, or we could provide a user with an existing access code, which will give them access to a single collection or a, a single book or any number of titles as well, right? So we do have a single access code, which, which will allow the individual to do that. And again, we do this to kind of give individuals the opportunity to review existing titles. Okay, so great. Um, so let's start off by logging in to the Speedy Reader. And again, what you're gonna see quickly is the top level navigation, which is broken down into grades. So we've got grade one all the way through to grade nine. And then we of course have a massive catalog um, of content on for grades three to five, which include grades three, four, and five. And then of course we've got kindergarten, pre-K, and then we have STEM focused um, content. And then we also have our true Canadian series from our sister company, Speedy Publishing Canada Limited. Okay, so um, it, the functionality of uh, the readable for the student is really, really focused on deep dive searching, right? So one of the things that we know that students are gonna use or read it for is the ability to research content, right? And it gives the teachers the ability to drive um, a student or send a student directly to a particular title because all of our titles are focused on one specific topic. So um, let's say, for example, we wanted to go into grade five and we wanted to look on European history as an example. So let's talk about the battle between the red, the red rose and the white rose. That's a specific topic right there. Um, the beginning of the Renaissance, the glory of the Renaissance, the rise of the Ottoman Empire, um, the Berlin Wall, which is a little bit more um, modern history, but still European history. Um, and then we have things like geography and travel, right? And that covers specific topics like climate zones, um, the African continent, beautiful America, Midwest and the Great Plains, storm chasing, clouds, climate and weather. We've got climate and weather. Um, what's the difference there? And a whole other range of direct topics, right? So the deserts and grasslands, a little bit of ecology, fresh water and marine biomes, um, and the geography of the U.S. Midwest states, um, Northeast states, South region states, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Each particular book is focused on one specific topic and that allows a teacher to be able to really and truly for a specific reason or for a specific topic, send the student directly there to find that, right? Um, now, if the student is doing their research on their own, they can use our deep dive SERPs, right? Which is our search engine results. And we're tweaking this every single month to try and make it more and more efficient. So for example, if we were to look for the word braille. Now, we know that if we typed in that particular keyword or even a longer tail um, keyword search term, that we would probably find that information in mainly the metadata. So that would be the title, the description, and of course the keyword terms as well. The key thing about the Speedy Reader is that it not only goes into the metadata as a deep dive search, but it goes into the content as well, right? So we'll find examples here um, where the term Braille is actually not mentioned in the title or in the description. Um, definitely might be in keywords though, but it is in the content itself. So that allows us or allows a student to really do that deep dive search, right? And find the different things that might fit with what they're looking for. And that deep dive search is critical. Um, so one of the things that we also wanted to look on is the ability for the teacher and the student to be able to communicate on multiple levels. So if we head over here to some of our favorite titles here, I'll head here. So I'll take a look on the book, The Balancing Act. We had reviewed that in the previous um, video, which was primarily for the teacher. And we'll head over to our My Data section. And so if I head over to Notes here, what you'll see is that we had shared a highlight as well as a, um, a specific note um, that went to the particular student. And in this case here, the student will see these notes right here in that particular book. They'll see if they're comments, they can also comment on that. I don't think we switched that feature on just yet. But as you can see here, here is that highlight that the teacher would have shared with the student. 
and they can click on that highlight they'll see anything that you know any notations that were made they'll also see any notes and say hey this is really great so they'll see any notes that the teacher wants to see so again the, the teacher and the student can communicate with different sections of the book and this is specific and unique to that teacher and student right so if there are other students who are reading that no one else on the platform is going to see those unique changes that you've made to your own existing content, right? So each content has their own backend per se and accessibility of their own book. Um, and again, the student can of course uh, make their own notes and create their own highlights. In this case, I'll highlight these two sentences here and I can change the color of the highlights. So, you know, it doesn't kind of clash with what a highlight was there before. So we have that ability and all the other functionality such as the um, table of contents, whether they're going to head to the introduction or we want to take a look on, let's say something like when things are off the balance. I'll just go and deep dive here and I'll say um, owls and humans, right? As part of that. So we have that little bit of information here, right? And more content. And then we head over to our mark records, right? So that's something again that is available on every single title and it really makes it really easy for the student to kind of um, dive down. Now another quick thing that I wanted to mention is a deep, deep dive within that particular content. So if I was to look for the term ecosystem as an example and hit the enter key here, we can find exactly every single page that the word ecosystem has been mentioned, right? So within the book, we can actually find different topics or different things that are included. And that helps both the teacher and the student to find things that they're looking for. So for example, here we've got the nutrient cycle. That's something that's, that might be really, really interesting to students as well. And, um, and, and again, that comes down to, you know, just making sure that the backend system is extremely useful for both students and teacher. And finally, we wanted to make sure that we mentioned that the usage of things such as lesson plans are going to be available to both teacher and student in an existing catalog format, right? So it's going to be on our top level navigation. And of course, we continue to work on our existing audio, right? And read alongs, right? And so that will be ready in a couple of weeks. Um, I would probably say roughly around seven to eight weeks. We should have our backend system fully um, the audio version available for students as well. And we should have been able to populate or upload as many of our lesson plans as possible. Okay, guys. So that pretty much concludes the overview of the existing Rito for these students.